This is Russell Moccasin's 2024 Zephyr boot. In Greek, Zephyr means a breeze from the west. As nice it, as it feels, this is a, a, a lot more substantial than just a breeze. How you going? Welcome back to Bootlosophy and my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waterways on which I live and work, the Wajit people. This is Russell Moccasin's 2024 version of the original Zephyr boot. I understand the Zephyr design has been around for years, uh, Russell Moccasin's original zip-back moccasin. But I don't know why it was originally called the Zephyr. I mean, it's a cool sounding name, but I looked it up and, it, and Zephyr is Greek and it means a breeze from the west or a westerly breeze. I guess it's light for a 9 to 10 inch boot, I think because of the moccasin construction, but it's certainly not delicate or breezy. In fact, it's quite a unique design. I'm not sure how I'd categorize it in terms of boot style. I suspect a lot of my viewers might hate the look, but personally, I really like the uniqueness. Uh, and I think if you've never seen something like this before, it will grow on you. And probably not many people in your circle would have seen something like this either. So it makes a great talking point boot. It is a proper moccasin construction, which I'll explain when I uh, get into talking about the construction of these boots. Uh, so because it's moccasin, uh, that means the toe box has that classic mock toe apron stitch. But it's also a laceless boot with a strap and buckle on the instep. So looking at it with your pants covering the shaft, it looks like a, like a mock toe engineer boot, which is a, a strange look. If you did lift your pants leg, you see the zipper back fastening, which is unique to me. I have had fashion-centric boots with a side zipper before, but this is really a one-off uh, with a zipper at the back, and it's, it is so comfortable. I'll put a link in the description area below to this um, off-the-shelf 2024 Zephyr, and another link to a premier build 2024 Zephyr, which basically is an MTO. They are both affiliate links, so if you think you want to get one, I'd appreciate it if you help my channel and use one of those links so that I can get a 5 or 6% kickback at no extra cost to you uh, to help me fund my channel. And of course, don't forget to click on the like and subscribe buttons to also support this channel. So let's go take a look at who is Russell Moccasin. It is a 125 plus year company founded in 1898 in Wisconsin by the original founder, William Russell. Like so many American heritage brands, uh, they first made boots for the logging industry, but soon their true moccasin construction footwear started to become popular with outdoorsmen uh, to use uh, when they were hunting, fishing and hiking. Some famous Americans wore their boots on extraordinary journeys. Charles Lindbergh, for example, who is famous for first flying solo across the Atlantic, he wore a pair of their boots in 1931, flying across the top of the world uh, from the US to what was then called the Far East in China and Japan. In 1935, Wiley Post flew uh, into the stratosphere wearing the world's first functional pressure suit and a pair of Russell moccasins. <laughs> uh, in 1948, Earl Schaefer walked an end-to-end 2,000-mile -end hike on the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. The brand changed hand a number of times over the decades, and I, I don't think it's unfair to say that in recent years, like many American heritage boot brands, it got a bit stale. It took new owners, led by the new owner-CEO Luke Colby, to realize that the unique designs and continuing legacy of handmade, hand-stitched moccasin footwear could be revamped and revitalized with energetic leadership. Since their takeover in 2022, the new owners have revitalized the brand, uh, still keeping its workers and their experience, and then relaunching old models with a savvy social media presence. And it's not all hype on social media either. Luke Colby has introduced really new ways of thinking to revitalize the brand. You can watch my interview with him uh, up here. One of the viewers who watched that interview, uh, his handle is Kato2395, said, I have doubts of new ownership since most brands always fall in quality and lose their original vision when they change ownership. However, this interview removes my doubt. I think this new CEO and owner is perfect for Russell. His deep respect for the company and his passion for craftsmanship 
might even bring Russell to a whole new level. I think so too. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's look at the construction of these boots. First of all, it's, tr it's, it's a true moccasin constructed boot. Now, most of you watching will know what a mock toe or moccasin toe is. You've seen or you've probably even worn your Thorogood mock toe work boots or, or your Red Wing 875 classic mock toes. You will recognize the mock toe by this characteristic uh, apron stitch. But those other boots are mock, as in pretend, mock toes. This one is real. And what's the difference? In a real moccasin construction, the leather is lasted or pulled around the foot-shaped mold called last from the bottom up. Now, instead of pulling it over the last, which is what uh, most brands do, uh, and then stitching on the soles, this one is lasted from underneath and then the vamp piece is uh, stitched on with the mock toe apron stitch. So under this outsole is the leather itself, wrapping around your foot all around from underneath. This is in fact a double vamp boot. Now this means that the outside leather, what you see, is lasted from under uh, and stitched close with the apron piece. Then a second full vamp piece is pulled from under and sewn uh, with a stitch across the top of it and then pushed into the outer vamp like a leather sock. So what this means is you have a full piece of leather under your foot stitched around the apron, and then inside that another full piece of leather stitched to uh, close at the top of it. But before that inner vamp is put in, the outer vamp is stitched to a midsole using a black stitch, or a stitch that goes through the bottom of the outer vamp on the inside, through the midsole to attach the midsole. Then a thin rubber slip sole is glued to the midsole and then the outside edge of the leather midsole is stitched through it and the rubber slip sole effectively giving you a double midsole made up of oak tan leather and rubber. Uh, so this is not a welt, this is actually the midsole. And then on top of that the rubber Vibram Oxford outsole is glued onto that uh, slip sole. The construction makes for great water resistance, even though there's a Blake stitch on the inside that goes through the outer vamp and the midsole. Now normally, this might let moisture in through the stitch holes. But in this case, because of that second inner vamp that's stitched at the top, there's like a leather waterproofing layer built in and the stitching at the bottom don't align with the inner vamp stitches at the top so the water doesn't get through hole to hole. I haven't tried it uh, with this pair of boots. But I have a pair of Russell Moccasin backcountry boots, which you can see the review of up there. And I was wearing the backcountry and I've stood in ankle deep flowing water for five to 10 minutes without any water getting in. The heel counter is oak tan leather uh, and there's no stiffener at the toe, which basically keeps its shape because of the apron stitch and the double vamp. If you look at the apron stitch, there's the apron piece on top, which is pulled over and rolled over the edge of the lower vamp before it's stitched to further keep water out. And this, as you can see, is a hand stitch. The pattern of the leather of the boot has a lower vamp that's stitched to the shaft around the heel, forming like a, a boat effect basically to also keep water out, uh, even before the inner vamp does its work. So you see what I mean by it's not delicate by any means. The fastening is also unique, it's laceless. You put your feet in and then tighten the strap over your instep and then you pull up the zip at the back. I'll tell you about how it fits later, but the hardware is solid brass. The zip is made by YKK, so you know, they're not gonna fail anytime soon. Once zipped up, unlike an engineer boot, you don't need a, a strap at the top of the shaft because the zipper itself pulls the shaft as tight as any engineer boot shaft uh, can be. The leather behind the zipper is gusseted, again helps to keep the water out. Inside the boot, the inner vamp acts like a liner around the foot, but the shaft itself is unlined, which I think is good because it allows your leg to breathe. The leather is SB Foot's Timberjack leather. The colour is called Walnut. Many of you will know that SB Foot Tannery is owned by Red Wing and it's situated in Red Wing in Minnesota, US. The Timberjack leather feels similar to Red Wing's harness leathers. It's very oily and very waxy on the surface. There's a little bit of pull up. Uh, and again, all that oil and wax protects from moisture. But you know, it's a lot more supple than the harness leathers. 
Uh, it's much softer in the hand than say an Iron Ranger amber harness, despite being a good two millimeters thick. Inside the boot, they stitch in a heel to arch uh, leather sock liner with, I think, a thin piece of foam for comfort just under the heel. Caring for this Timberjack leather uh, shouldn't be a problem. I would treat it like any oil tanned leather. Definitely keep it clean with a damp rag and brush the dirt off and always brush, brush a lot. I can't say that more about boots, but brush. <laughs> it has quite a pull up, so I'd clean it and brush it if uh, you've been out in the field. Uh, I'd keep brushing it when it's dry to redistribute the oils and waxes that are tanned into it. When it eventually feels dry, which should take a while in normal use because it really is oily and waxy, uh, replenish the oils and waxes with a waxy balm like RM Williams' leather and saddle conditioner or even Obanoff's grease, but that might darken this leather. If you are scared of the leather darkening, I think Big Four will probably be alright or something like Smith's balm. As for sizing, I took this in the same size as the back country that I talked about earlier. Uh, I measure US 8.5D on the Brannock device, and in most US heritage boots, I take an 8D. The backcountry in 8D fitted me perfectly. These in 8D feel a bit longer and a little bit looser. I'm thinking I might even have been able to get into a 7.5D, which is a full size down from Brannock, but I am a bit careful about that claim since I haven't actually tried going down in size. You see, like all laceless boots, there will be a bit of heel slip and it will feel a little loose on the instep, uh, even when I really cinch down that strap on the instep. But unless I wear thick socks, there is a bit of give in the instep and toe length in this boot. The Russell Moccasin website has a very tech-based sizing function to help you size. Uh, I haven't tried it myself and I have heard people say that uh, both that it is fantastic, but also that it's a little off. One of the things that might make the tool give you a false reading is if you take your scan of your foot with a credit card as a measure at an angle. You have to be really careful that you don't misread a parallax view where uh, from an angle your phone camera measures the angle rather than straight down 90 degrees. Parallax view is basically like, um, you know, if you close one eye and you align your finger to a target, then you close the other eye and open the other one and suddenly you're off target. So that's the parallax. If in doubt, get in touch with them. They're really helpful. Uh, as for comfort, hoo-wee, these are comfy. <laughs> the, the moccasin construction uh, set on top of the midsole really feels like your feet are wrapped in the boot uh, and you, feel, you, you really get to feel everything you're walking on without actually feeling vulnerable because that's a fairly thick outsole. Uh, the arch support is okay. It's not great, uh, perhaps because it's not specifically formed underneath. Uh, but like the wrapped around feeling, you do feel like you're barefoot and as, as comfy as that normally feels. Uh, the outsole itself is quite low heeled and it's quite flat. On flat or undulating ground or in the office, it's very comfortable. I'm not sure about the grip on really muddy soil though, but I will try it out sometime and, and when I can, I'll bring you an update in a year or two. The 2024 Zephyr is, I think, US $750 or $800. I'm not too sure because the website has the annoying habit of automatically showing you uh, the price in your currency of the country that you're located in. So all I see is that it's over 1200 Australian dollars, which includes duty, by the way. Someone commented in my backcountry review that it had gone up 30% since my review. That was dreadful. Uh, and then they promptly deleted their comment. <laughs> well, it hadn't gone up. I think they were comparing my stated USD price for their, I suspect, Canadian dollar price showing up on their computer, and then I think they realized their mistake. As far as I'm aware, the Russell Moccasin prices have stayed stable for over a year now. But let's face it, 700 to 800 US or 1200 Aussie is not cheap. But in my opinion, what you get for it is actually remarkable. Uh, it's the value of the price thing. The real moccasin construction is really something, as is the incredible comfort and feel. The stitching is very clean and precise and the leather is just super supple. The new owners have kept and in fact are bringing back some of the traditional construction process, including the handmade nature of putting these boots together. Quality control, decades of experience and handmade. What would you pay for that as against quick factory made? No, it's not cheap. 
but price to value or price to what you get. I think it's pretty good. So there you have it. Don't forget to click on like if you hopefully like this review. And if you subscribe, you're not going to miss my weekly reviews of a whole load of other boots. You should go and watch my interview with your new CEO next. Uh, I will link it on screen and down below. Uh, take care then. And until the next time I see you, be good.